What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can catch me on Twitter at no more parties. And we're back today with a prize picks flex play bet. We're going five by five again, trying to 10x our money on player prop bets over on the prize picks app. You can use promo code BDGE. You get a deposit bonus, make some money. We are, I believe, 13 and two on our main bets this season. We went five and zero last week after going four and one in week one and in week two. Let's get into the week four Thursday night football prize picks prop bet. The first bet that I like this week is Joe Burrow's rushing yards line, which is 11 and a half yards. I like the over. He rushed for 47 yards in week one. He rushed for 26 yards in week two. And last week, he rushed for zero yards, but he ran the ball five times. Last season, Burrow averaged only 2.5 rushing attempts per game and 7.4 rushing yards per game on those attempts. While this season, he's averaging five attempts per game and 24.3 yards per game, despite not having any rushing yards last week. Per, I'm going to fuck this name up really bad, per at PFF underscore Moo. His name's Timo. I don't know how to say his last name either, but like Timo Risque. Really smart guy, uh, pro football focus analyst on Twitter. Per him, he shared a chart the other day with the scramble rates of various quarterbacks, throughout the, every quarterback in the league, really. And on all dropbacks, this season, Joe Burrow is scrambling at the eighth highest rate in the league, more often than Kyler Murray, more often than Lamar Jackson on Joe Burrow's dropbacks. When pressured, he's scrambling at the ninth highest rate in the league. And against the Blitz, he's scrambling at the fifth highest rate in the league. Their offensive line is bad. He's taking off and scrambling a lot, especially when he's pressured, especially when he's being blitzed. He's running the ball more this season. He's gaining more yards this season. We know he's he's mobile. We know he's athletic. Really, all he's got to do is like roll out one time, run for a first down, and he's mostly there. But he's running the ball five times a game this season. I like him to hit this over. The next line I like is Joe Mixon's receiving yards line, which is at 18.5. I like the over. He had 63 receiving yards in week one. He had 26 receiving yards in week two, and he had 14 last week. So he barely missed this line last week. Well, I guess by like five yards, but he was close last week, hit it the previous two weeks. He averaged 19.6 receiving yards per game last season. And last season, he only had 48 targets. This season, he's on pace for like 106. And last week, the Dolphins, who obviously the Bengals are playing tonight, last week, the Dolphins gave up 14 receptions and 121 receiving yards combined to James Cook, Zach Moss, and Devin Singletary in their game against the Bills. They've been getting Joe Mixon involved as a receiver this year. He's a talented receiver. We've seen that going back to his time at Oklahoma. He's been underutilized there throughout his career. But so far this season, that has not been the case. I like him to get at least 19 receiving yards this week on Thursday Night Football. The next line I like is Jalen Waddell. His receiving yards line is 65 and a half. Once again, I like the over. He's averaging 114 receiving yards per game this year and has hit this over in, in all three of the Dolphins games. He's got more targets and more yards than Tyreek Hill this season. Even last season, as a rookie, he was averaging 63.4 receiving yards per game. That's just, what, two yards less than he needs to hit tonight in order to smash this over. We got Mike McDaniel wheeling and dealing with Tua Tungavailoa. The over-under for tonight's game is 47 points, and the Bengals are currently favored by four, which gives the Dolphins an implied point total of 19.5, if I'm doing my math correctly. In games in which the Dolphins have scored at least 20 points, and Jalen Waddell is on the team, so like last year and this year, he's averaged 85 and a half yards per game in those games. So if they score about what they're supposed to score tonight, odds are he's going to put up like 80 yards. I like him to hit this over. Get at least 66 receiving yards tonight. The next line I like is the exact same line for T. Higgins. 65 and a half receiving yards. I like the over. He's averaging 63.7 receiving yards per game this season and has hit the over in two out of three games. The only game he didn't hit the over in was week one when he got hurt and only played 26% of the snaps. The Dolphins are currently 11th in the league in receiving yards given up to wide receivers. And when T. Higgins plays at least 50% of the snaps and when the Bengals score at least 24 points, their implied total tonight is like 27 and a half. In those games, T. Higgins averages 78.4 yards per game in those games. I think we got some wiggle room here. T. Higgins can hit this over. The next line I like is Raheem Mostert's rushing yards line. I'm taking the under on his 38.5 rushing yards. He had 16 rushing yards in week one, 51 in week two, and 11 last week, averaging 26 per game, 
39 rushing yards, which is what he needs to hit this over, would be 50% of his season total in rushing yards to this point. He's played 42, 55, and 56% of the snaps this season and averaged only eight rushing attempts per game while sharing time with Chase Edmonds. The Bengals have given up the ninth fewest rushing yards to running backs and the seventh lowest per carry average in the entire league so far this season. Like, they're only giving up 3.7 yards per carry on the ground so far. I'm not sure how much room to run Raheem Mostert will have. He's a fast guy. He's he's the kind of guy who can, you know, kind of bust out a 40-yard run and ruin this in, in, you know, kind of one rush. But those are fairly rare. The Bengals have been a stout running defense so far. Raheem Mostert splitting time. You know, I, I, I like taking the under here. And then for my honorable mentions, which I have been absolute shit on so far this season, I think I'm like 2-13 and 13 on honorable mentions or something like that. But T. Higgins, five receptions. I like the over here. He had five last week despite, what was he, he almost got concussed or something and came back. So he didn't play the whole game last week. He had six, so he hit this over in week two. And then he played less than 30% of the snaps in week one and so obviously didn't hit this number. But he's been right there when playing most of the game. He probably would have had six receptions if he had stayed in the game last week. I like him to get this over. And then the other one I like is Tyreek Hill, 71.5 receiving yards. I like the over. He's gone for 94 in week one, 190 in week two, a down game with 33 last week. But this Dolphins offense is is high flying so far. And even if Tua misses the game, I think he's currently on the injury part. I'm recording this on Wednesday. Even if it's Bridgewater, like I don't know that he's that much different of a player, at least, you know, kind of stylistically than Tua is. He, he can hit Tyreek Hill on a slant or a screen or whatever and have him take it 50 yards. I like Tyreek Hill to go over 71 and a half receiving yards this week. I actually like all of the four main receivers in this game to go over their lines. I just like the secondary receivers because there's a little bit more wiggle room with those lower lines. T. Higgins, Jalen Waddle, 65 and a half yards versus Tyreek Hill and Jamar Chase needing to hit 71 and a half. So those are the bets I like. Joe Burrow, Joe Mixon, Jalen Waddle, T. Higgins, Raheem Mostert, a couple honorable mentions. Let's go five for five again tonight. 10x our money. See you next week.